Hey, how you guys doing? So you guys want a new video, huh? Well, I have a good news for you. I'm back. So before this video starts, I wanted to say thank you to everyone uh, for the past two videos. Uh, the numbers are fucking crazy. I think we are almost at 8k views on the how to create uh, Chrome effects using iCandy7. And I think it is like 1k views on the how to create your own silica smoke app. So big thank you to everyone. Uh, today this video is about creating your own typography using Procreate. And if you guys don't know what Procreate is, it's an app on iOS and um, maybe available on Android, but I don't know. That costs $10. And today I'm going to show you how to use it. And by the way, have you seen it? Seen this is from my Twitch. I'm streaming twice a week, so I'll put the link in the description if you guys want to join me on Twitch. But today, this is not about Twitch. Today is about typography. So here we go. All right, so we are now on Procreate. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff here. I have every font, like every typography that I made for my Inktober challenge here. So uh, first thing you need to do is create a new document, of course. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on Procreate because I don't want to, first of all. And this is not the theme here. Today is about learning how to create your typography. So uh, I'm just going to stick with it. All right, so the first thing you need is a base for the typography. Uh, let's say I want to type uh, type. <laughs> let's say I want to type type. So type uh, first thing i'm gonna do is think about the letters how is it made so like for my base i'll probably draw uh, these letters as simple as possible to make it understable so for the t something like this pretty easy pretty rough so that's a t uh for the y maybe Maybe something like this. Who knows? Uh, P. And E. So now by looking at this, you can understand how many squares you have and how many parts you have. So you have one here. You have one here. You have this one and then you have this one this one here here and one two three so you have all of these parts and now you can start thinking how are you going to draw uh, these shapes and how are you going to make it look understandable and legible so just create a new layer lower the opacity so I'm thinking maybe something like this uh, I want something really rounded and really abstract, so maybe something like this for the T. This will be my base, and then I can start from here. So for the Y, let's follow the path, so something like that. And now we'll go like this, just a little bit squared here. For the P, you have this part and this one, so let's make it like this. And now for the E you have, so I'm probably going to use this part and this part to make it follow. So maybe, maybe like this and then cut it in half. So this is my sketch, it's pretty cyberpunk-like, it's pretty futuristic and you can start to think about how you can improve it. So I'm going to just switch my brush, take black. So for the beginning I'm just going to make some simple lines, no rounded. Uh, I think the T is legible enough. Uh, the Y is not legible enough, I, 
I think uh, maybe I should do something like this to make it legible. So, so we'll just redesign this shape. Alright, uh, now the P, it was good. Alright, this is too large, uh, like the height here is not the same as here. So, I'm gonna reduce the size of this square, well, of this rectangle. And now for my E, the E was good, so nothing nothing special to make all right so this is the new shapes looks better to me so I can finally start to design my letters properly and to redesign uh, the mistakes that I made uh, maybe something around it here will be fine not too much just like this so I'm thinking right now maybe for the Y I should do something um, a little bit less abstract maybe this will be more legible yeah, definitely. So I'm gonna stick with this. Maybe add a square here. Now this looks like an F. So this is how I'm gonna do it. So I need my E to be the same height as the P. So I think it looks good. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, next step is to make it uh, like perfect and use another brush, so a soft brush. I'm usually using this brush from Calligraphic. Uh, it's simple line. Oh, and also what you can do is create a new layer, go to your settings, go to drawing guides, and click uh, assist drawing. Now you can see exactly where your shape and where your letters should start and stop. So this is like the height, the max height that I need. Let's go back to this. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you will fix everything later on Illustrator. You just have to create good shapes. Like this for example, I see that this is not a line. Should be like that to follow this. Um, this plan so let's take this right now there we go if you want to if you want it to be easier you can also like add a new layer and just as I did with these black lines do the same for here but for me I'd rather do this on illustrator as it is easier So this is what I have now, let's add some colors to see how it will look like. And as you can see, um, like this angle is not the same as here, so I need to fix this. Uh, I think the problem is on uh, the Y. Yeah, that's better. So add colors on everything. And you have your your sketch and your final sketch so like obviously now you can still fix everything if your typography is not perfect this is not a problem you'll fix everything in Illustrator uh, also if you if you don't like what you're having right now uh, you can still improve your typography by doing again and again some drawings on top of it 
but for me this is fine and I really like it so let's head to Illustrator okay so we are on Illustrator I just imported my typography uh, I resize it like this just lock this layer and create uh, another one on top of it so you can vectorize your typography um, first things first uh, good tips for you if you want to vectorize typography uh, the worst thing you can do is create your shapes like this you know like freely and let me just change the color of the tangent so you can see yeah that's better like don't do this uh, this will not look good don't do this the best way to do vectorization on typography is to always have some uh, perpendicular tangents so let's say I have my anchor points here and here this is how it should look uh, so like always perpendicular horizontal or vertical but that's it so for this type of uh, typography I will add some guidelines just like this and another one here uh, I want it to be the same the same height so I will duplicate just get rid of this one so now this is the same height this one is the same as this one and let's add another one like here uh, I can see that I have a lot of a lot of shapes that goes here and take the same height and add another one here for this one so let's lock our guidelines get rid of these two and here we go so for this kind of shapes what I will do is just place some uh, I'll say guideline but these are not guidelines but this will act as a guideline so this um, this line to have the same angle every time so just duplicate it and resize it to fit your typography three hours later two thousand years later alright so every angle has been made so like now you can easily uh, fill everything just by just by selecting the pencil and clicking on every lines that you made. All right, so I think I'm done. Let's see, uh, what if I invert, yeah. So now I'm done. Uh, as you can see, this is not perfect because the space between here and here is not the same as here. So you can fix it by selecting a space that you will use all the time. Uh, I'm cool with, uh, I think maybe, maybe this one is fine. This is not too much and, and just enough. So I'm gonna I'm select this and duplicate here. And now I'll just pick these two points and drag it. And do this for every space that you have. Also be careful, like here for example, uh, if, I, if I just move this, like these two points, then it will not be aligned with uh, the, the bar or the P so you have to move everything or you can also just move this so I think now everything is fine Let's see, yeah, I think now everything is fine so you can get rid of these pieces and let's see how it look like. Yeah, this is much better. Uh, if you want it rounded, you can still select everything and just 
play with it to have it rounded. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. Also, I forgot this shape, so let's just make it. Alright, so now as you can see, this shape is not as long as this one. So it's up to you, but I like having stuff that is really geometric. So what you can do is uh, just select one, just like I did with the blank space, uh, like this one. So I'm going to just select same size for this. Yeah, just like that. And now resize everything just like I did. Alright, so here I have a problem. As you can see, uh, if I move this, then the angle will not be the same, and then the blank space will not be the same. So what I can do is just group them up, select every point that you see here, and just move it so the angle stays the same, and then I can ungroup. Alright, so now everything looks perfect to me, everything is fine, so this is how you create your own typography, like your own custom type on Procreate. Of course you can still add some effects, but obviously this is just how you create this kind of typography on Procreate, but if you guys are interested into learning how to create different kind of typography, join me on Twitch, I'll put the link in the description, I'm streaming twice a week, and I'm streaming about typography, creating even fonts, so if you guys are interested, join me on Twitch. And if you guys are interested in Chrome type in Blender, check my friend's YouTube channel. His name is Leo Lavender. I'll put the link in the description, of course. And he will create a Chrome type effect on this typography. And see you soon. Bye.